Today, let's take a look at this youth football uh, split back counter play that we've been working on. And we want to take this uh, play to use it as an opportunity to talk about front side and back side blocking here. And uh, it's a good example of, as a football coach, having to understand first your personnel, second, who do you want blocking who on the front side over here. And maybe the most important thing is, how are you going to block the backside and get the play started? So we'll start here. This is a traditional 6-2 defense that you're going against right here. So you see what we've done. We have pulled the guard and we're pulling the Z with the uh, just understanding that that Z is going to be a bigger tight end type player. Now, if you're using that Z as a small running back uh, in this formation, then it might not be the play. Uh, to run it might be that you want to run that play a little differently and maybe pull the tackle or the tight end But you see right now we've taken our personnel into consideration at the Z Because that Z is going to pull around and have to block that play side backer now We're accounting for flow initially this play obviously comes off of a sweep that you probably should have run one two three times to this side over here where the defense is now starting to overplay your wing and starting to get fast flow by the inside backers to stop your sweep. So coming back with the counter, that backer should start and come back like we have indicated here. That, But that Z is going to pull up inside. Now, the first puller will be the guard, and that guard is going to pull tight to the line of scrimmage and block the end man on the line of scrimmage inside out. Now, you can have complicated rules with this as you get in the older divisions of football, but we think for younger players, the best thing to do is just pull them and kick out uh, inside out. Uh, you're hoping that this ball goes up inside. Now, you always have to coach that guard, and in this case, the, the Z, that if that guard gets a wrong arm by that backer, and the backer comes inside, crashes inside, forcing that guard to wrap, and the Z just needs to wrap right around that also, and then the back will uh, follow suit, and that'll end up being an outside play. But a couple things right here on the back side. Now, we've got that tight end base blocking the backer. We also have the two back coming across the formation uh, as a backside cutoff. Now, you'll see here in a second where sometimes we will allow that Y to go second level and leave the two alone back here. We don't feel like that's a great idea in this situation because if that tight end were to inside release and that backer were to get in the hip pocket or maybe even in front of the uh, Z, then the two back really has no chance of making that block. So right here, you're looking at a 6-2 version of this. Let's go back and look at, uh, let's look at a, say a 4-4 four, four split, all right? Pretty much the same thing, but what we've done here is now you don't have a C-gap player on the front side. So now your F or play side tight end can come right off and block this play side backer. Now we've got four inside backers and a 4-4. Four -four. They're all going to probably start play side or fake side and come back. All right, now, once again, you see we did not uh, release the Y inside because if this end got in the hip pocket of, of the puller here, the two would have no chance. And you've got your two there in case that corner comes off the edge or anything like that to uh, make that block. Now, once again, personnel considerations come into this. You've got a smaller back probably and a smaller corner and they can make that play. Once again, you can see that we're blocking back, all right, just trying to get angles on this, uh, making sure that the pullers, all right, can get out. Now, this backside tackle right here all they're really going to do is check to make sure, once again, that the tackle just doesn't try to run in the hip pocket, get a piece, and then chip up on the backer. And finally, let's take a look at an odd look here. Let's go just the plain old 5-3. All right. Once again, protecting the backside, making sure that the pullers can get out. All right. And now what we're doing on the front side is double teaming the potential C-gap player with this F, kicking out with the guard, and coming up inside. Now, this in this case right here, your Z may turn up may turn up inside because you've got really two double teams at the point of attack. So once again, all first down playbook plays 
we block up versus multiple fronts, even a bear look here. And uh, that's just for this very situation right here where there's going to be some different looks, play side and back side. And we want to finish by just saying that not all plays are good versus all defenses. And that's why we draw these up against six different looks right here. Uh, there may be a play, it's your favorite play, that you just cannot run that week because you know that they're going to be in a 4-4 all day or they're going to be in a 5-3 bear all day. And you have other plays that look better against those uh, particular defenses. So as an offensive coach, you have to take that into consideration. And with our coaching notes over here, we try to uh, help you out a little bit with that also. So anyway... This is just uh, one situation of a counter play where you have to take your personnel, your play side blocking, and your backside blocking to get the play started into consideration as you're game planning.